Civil rights icon Congressman John Lewis is being remembered today by those who knew him best, including two who were with him on that march with Dr. King in 1963. Lewis may be best remembered for his courage and for the brutal beating he endured in April of 1965 when he was peacefully marching with Dr. King for voting rights across the Edmund Pettus Bridge in Selma on the way to Birmingham. The assault by sheriffs who clubbed Lewis to the ground and beat on others became known as Bloody Sunday. I spoke with him about this on the 50th anniversary. NBC interviewed you on that fateful day before you started the march. We're marching today to dramatize to the nation, and dramatize to the world, that hundreds and thousands of Negro citizens of Alabama, but particularly here in the Blackbelt area, denied the right to vote. And we intend to march to Montgomery to present St. Grievous to Governor Joyce C. Wallace. Well, I remember that day very well. We were determined, we were organized, we were disciplined, and we were committed to the way of peace, the way of love, the way of nonviolence. We were prepared to die for what we believed in. Joining me now is Andrew Young, civil rights leader, former ambassador to the United Nations, and of course a, a civil rights leader with, Mar with Martin Luther King as well, Eleanor Holmes Norton, who represents the District of Columbia, and John Meacham, Pulitzer Prize winning presidential historian and author of an upcoming book on John Lewis, His Truth is Marching On, John Lewis and the Power of Hope. Ambassador Young, first of all, how do you remember John Lewis? I remember John Lewis as one of the most powerful, humble, and dedicated people. You know, it, it's always amazed me how he went to uh, the founding of SNCC in North Carolina, and there must have been 70, 80 city colleges there with their leadership, and they were all brilliant. They were all articulate. They were all ambitious and aggressive, and yet they elected John as the president. And had they not elected him, they might not have held together. But there's something about him as a kind of a spiritual magnetism that attracts people to him, and you know you can trust him. And Congresswoman, you were with John Lewis as one of the staff organizers of the march on Washington. For him to speak that day was such so significant as the head of the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, SNCC. Uh, he, as Ambassador Young just said, did, did you also see that spark that made him stand out from the crowd? Uh, certainly, because before I worked for March on Washington, with John, I was a member of the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee. Uh, and when Ambassador Young talks about our electing John as the chair, please understand how, why that was done. Uh, it really wasn't done in the way we elect people today for office or for, for any kind of uh, uh, anything in your own uh, life. Uh, John became the head of the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee because he was the bravest. And when I say that, I really want you to understand what that means. When you see demonstrations in the streets today, they become routine. Uh, SNCC was the, was, was the uh, bulwark that broke, broke open the worst parts of the South. Uh, and therefore, when the words took your life in your hands uh, have any meaning, John Lewis was elected chair of SNCC because he had taken his life in his hands more often than any of the other college students, not because he was the most articulate or the most iconic in any sense of the word. Uh, it's important to recognize that because we see so many demonstrations today, we may not understand what it meant to be arrested 40, more than 40 times. And that's what John Lewis was willing to risk, which meant he risked his life, not only on the on that bridge, that Patton Bridge, but uh, throughout the South and as leader of the shock troops. Uh, and that's what our, uh, our Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee 
was, little did we know, John and I, that uh, we would both come to Congress. Uh, and it was one of the joys of my life to reunite with John Lewis in the Congress of the United States. And John Meacham, uh, as we were just looking at pictures with John Kennedy, President Kennedy, in the Oval Office after the march, uh, John Lewis told me that they couldn't get a meeting agreed to with President Kennedy before the march because Bobby Kennedy as Attorney General and Nicholas Katzenbach and others were warning the president that it was going to be violent. They didn't know what it was going to yeah. be and that they even had a plan uh, to cut off the microphones if it became violent, which they had no intention of it being. Yeah. But the, those pictures in the Oval Office came afterwards. Uh, that was that was notable. It was. And, and look where John Lewis is there. And uh, the ambassador and the, and the congresswoman can, can, I think, affirm this. James Foreman, who was also a, a SNCC colleague, used to say, get out in front. Don't get in the back. Uh, but Lewis w would not put himself forward in moments like that. Uh, and in fact, it, I think it annoyed uh, some of the, the people in the communications world of SNCC that their, uh, their guy seemed more humble. But that's what he was. And it was a kind of heroic humility. And heroic humility is the test, one of the tests, of a saint and of a martyr. And that's what John Lewis was. And we're not being sentimental or gauzy or overreacting to the emotion of his death in saying that. The picture with Lyndon Johnson there is on the day the Voting Rights Act was signed uh, in 1965, which came about because SCLC and SNCC, uh, Ambassador Young was, was very much there, uh, went across that bridge at a time of great controversy uh, within the movement itself. And I think one of the things that is important to remember and that he would want us to remember is none of this was easy. It feels a little bit like a fable now, the movement. It feel, the images are so iconic, they're beautiful, the cause so just, but it was hard and it is hard. And the lesson of Lewis is, as he put it, you have to open yourself up to what he sometimes called the spirit of history. And to him, the spirit of history was rooted in the gospel. It was rooted in the story of Jesus, the Sermon on the Mount. The tactics came from Gandhi. Leaders like Howard Thurman and others had learned the tactics of nonviolence from the experience in India. They brought them to the American South. Men like James Lawson, uh, women like Ella Baker, who was the, instrumental in the founding of SNCC. There was this great cloud of witnesses and John Lewis walked point. Well, he also, in that arc of his role, had to make a very tough choice in 2008. And it was the day after a debate between Barack Obama during the primary season, uh, between Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton. And I wanted to share when I uh, interviewed him that day on why he decided to endorse Obama. His answer was quite surprising. Forty-three years ago, I marched across the bridge in Selma. That was much easier than the decision that I have to make, but I had to make it. You're saying this decision was harder than the Selma march? It was much uh, tougher. Congressman, you got your head beaten in. Your face was covered with blood. But this is tougher. I'm dealing with friends, people that I, I love, people that I admire, part of my extended family. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.